Okay, um, I've just done the video on sizing low loss headers and sizing distribution headers, and I thought I'd follow it up with using the ESB app to size your uh, variable temperature mixing valves. So um, if I go on my computer, enter into my heating tools, you'll see here I've got a selection of different tools for different uses, um, including my own gas calculator one actually, which I should have put in to there as well. Right, okay, right. So uh, in here I have the ESB app and Looks like it's an old version. That's, um, I'll update that later. This is a new toy for me. I was trying to buy a computer, but I'm completely useless with computers. I don't use email. And um, so this is a Galaxy tab, which works just like an Android phone. Um, Heat Geek very nicely sent me an iPad, and uh, just I don't know, I couldn't turn it on. Um, I've got a computer I can't turn on. I've got an iPad I can't turn on. Luckily, I've got some younger guys with me. I've given them the iPad and um, given the computer to my wife and I bought myself a Galaxy Tap, which seems to be nice and easy to use. So, right, let's try it. Valve dimensioning and VRG130. So nearly all the valves I'll use will be a VRG130. So these are standard mixing valves, variable temperature mixing valves that uh, we would use for mixed circuits for underfloor and radiator circuits. If I go into the calculator section, I just need to add some data here. So let's say I've got a circuit that's carrying five kilowatts. And here we've got the temperature difference or a delta T. And let's say we're going to do underfloor. So we're gonna have five kilowatt, uh, five kilowatt delta T five. And what it's going to do for it's going to give us our flow rate, but it's going to make some other assumptions for us, such as the pressure drop. And so what it's done, it's automatically made that assumption that we would have a pressure loss in our circuit of about 12.1 kilopascals, and it's selected a KVS value of 2.5. Now the maths behind this um, is that the valve should provide the same pressure drop through the valve at that flow rate. So I haven't done the calculations to prove that's how this app works, but that's how the maths works when you learn it from the theory papers. Um, so basically I'm assuming the maths is correct here, but um, I've been using this app to size my SB valves and I've been having good success with it. So um, I have done another video on the mathematics behind it, but this is the easy way to do it. This is how I do it. Now I don't bother doing the maths. Um, I use the estimated pressure drop um, and of course there could be some errors here. I think what they've done is they've worked out that um, there's some tolerance and some leeway in the valve. So example on here, they're saying you've got alternative uh, alternative valve that you could select of point, a KVS of 0.4. Just to remind anyone, the KVS value is the value that's assigned. It's basically in uh, it's the, the it's the pr the flow in cubic meters per hour that leads to a drop of one bar across a valve. So if you're pushing X amount of water through a valve, when you've got a pressure differential across a valve of one bar, measure that flow in cubic meters per hour, it will give you the KVS value. And then you can use the square law, which is on the other video. Um, so you say I've got a, a flow rate of one third of, of the original flow rate required and it will calculate out the new expected pressure drop through the valve and it won't be a one third of the original pressure drop because it follows the square law. Um, have a look at that on the other video. I don't know how to do those things, you know, where they say it'll appear, the link will appear up here. Well, I haven't got a clue how to do that, so I'm not gonna do it. You'll have to go and look for it. But um, anyway, that's how to do it. So it's easy, just the, the all you need to know is the delta T and the energy required for the circuit that you're doing. So, plug it into the SB app and fire away and you're up and running. One thing that you may have noticed for all of these calculations is you need to have a heat loss calculation. If you haven't got a heat loss calculation, then basically you're designing blind, you're doing everything blind and you're doing by rule of thumb. 
um, which of course, as usual, will probably be okay, <clears throat> but you won't know that it's right and you can't prove it's right. Anyway, as usual, I hope that helps.